Okay. M. File name. M8. Here we go. Set up for M8. 30 seconds, ISO 800. And. So, Howie and I can get millions of stars while Dad This was the like single picture. So, I will now go to um, Triffid. Mm -hmm, okay. Next by, which is M20. So, I'm taking the handset and making Messier catalog M20. Just get out of the full viewer. You may hear the scope going. Change the file name to M20. There's the beep. And by the time it gets here, I can click a single ISO 830 second shot. Go back into the viewer, and we should get the Trifford in about 25 seconds. With my colour adjustments left set for this. Coming up. You've big enough ears, Harry. You should be able to hear me. I think the alignment's pretty right. Soon find out. That's the shot. It's processing in the top there. You can see the little yellow thing going. Status bar. Here comes the shot. Boom. Here we go. Where's next? Um, where's uh, M21's nearby? I might go to that next. Just to hunt the messiers down tonight. Scope's going to M21. Out of full. Back over to here. Change the file name to M21. There's the beep, it's there. And click. Back into full. 30 second shot going. So we should see M21, the little star cluster at the bottom of the Triffid. About 20 seconds to go probably. And it should be coming up shortly. Here it goes, a shot should be coming in and processing up here. Um, What's Lagoon it? Nebula. You want to go to the Lagoon? No, that I one's... think that's what you're looking at. No, no, that was the Triffid. So that's the bit I was just going, it's, I'll show you the Lagoon, we'll go there next, okay? So, the Lagoon, which is, uh, what's the Lagoon? M... Uh, what is what's Lagoon's number? M. Yeah, let's go over here. Lagoon is, oh, of course it's Messier 8. I'm sure I just went there before, but we'll go there again, right? View object, it's slewing over there. Get out of the full screen mode. How dumb are me? Messier M8. Mate, it's like the, <laughs> the Aussie, Aussie acronym for mate. Mate, we're going to mate. Yeah, here we go. Take a 30 second shot, come up here and go. Man, how's it going, mate? Full, full <laughs> view. But there's M21. You can see that's at the bottom of this is the Triffid Nebula over here on the left. That's M20 and this is M21, a little cluster, open cluster that's just uh, whatever it is to the south of it or something. Anyway, that shot for the lagoon will be coming in shortly. You'll hear it go click and then you'll see the process status bar coming up here. Shortly. Mel, how's it going, mate? Here it comes, it's clicked. So this will be coming through shortly. There it is, I can see a yellow status bar. Here it comes and we will be on the lagoon very shortly. I bet it literally... Boom. Oh, that looks like a lagoon. <laughs> You like that? That's the lagoon. Uh, we'll go to Ptolemy's cluster, which is M7, which is nearby. 
might as well go to a few clusters, M7, let's go M7, I uh, can't see the buttons here, M7, view object, yep, it's slewing, so while it's slewing I'll go and put the um, title in here, M7, file name, M7, it's reached it, so I'll just click the shutter, and go back into full screen, so 30 seconds we'll see it. Have you seen the Ptolemy's cluster before? Nope. It looks like this. Well, apart from that star field in the background, it's just an open cluster. And I'll go to a, um, I'll find a glob next, so you can see what a globular cluster looks like. But right now, you can read all the details there, we'll do that later. I just want to fly around the sky for a So bit. it's in the uh, Scorpius arm? Uh, it says so, if you're reading it, you're bloody clever. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a large and brilliant open cluster in Scorpius. There you go. <laughs> so very short. There you go. It's processing yellow, I think. I saw it up there. So it's processing the shot. And you'll see it very shortly. Here. Are you looking for Dad? There we go. So there's... The, see, we've got a lot of the same stars. And you got a nice... See the yellow one there, which is on the iPad thing, view of it? So you can see it there. And you can see the same stars all around. So we'll do that one. Yeah, I'm sure. I'd say that's about billions of stars. Oh, it's a huge amount, isn't it? It's ridiculous. Ridic ridiculous. So what have we got around What's here? What's the largest open cluster that you can do? Open cluster? Uh, probably the Pleiades, which is in the north. I wonder if it's up. Hang on, we're going to... I don't think it is. Um, hang on, let me drop the iPad scale. Of course, it helps if I go to the right pole, not the south pole. Let me go to the North Celestial Pole. I did the veil last night. That was uh, very nice to see. But um, I don't think the Pleiades is here. I can find it here anyway. Well, it's probably in here. No, it's not above the horizon, so we're out of luck. But Damn. we'll go and find, we'll go down to the South Celestial Pole because there's lots of um, clusters and there's a galaxy down there too if, if it's risen at this time of year. Well, uh, I'm sure it has, but uh, uh, actually, no, it'll be, it'll be very low, sorry, the other way around. Uh, where have we got it? So here's Hadar, and it's off to a right angle from there, and there it you is. You know what I don't get? So here we go. The centre of our galaxy is called um, Sagittarius. Yep. However, um, what, why is the Milky Way called... Um, why is our galaxy called the Milky Way? Just is, because it looks like a spill of milk across the night sky if you're in pitch black, apparently. If I remember my readings on the same thing wondering why anyway let's go after this now we'll go to um user objects deep sky name star silas here we go and you see so that's 5139 good old amiga century 5139 enter yep this is a nice object i think you'll like omega centauri you'll like that that's what it looks like it's like billions of stars in a in a cluster instead of like an open cluster whereas you, you know, I wonder how much of them could have life on them. Well, you imagine that they keep finding planets around stars, so, you know, holy cow, there's probably zillions. So I know there are some planets in the galaxy that are considered Earth-like. Oh, yeah, definitely. There's, but it's some like of them a, are too hazardous for us. It's like a, uh, it's like a lottery that um, if you've got billions of stars, you'll have, you know, billions of planets and... Some of them might be in the right areas for life to be seeded or however it happens. Anyway. In orbit around the, around the star known as an area called the Goldilocks Zone. Yeah, spot on. How old are you? Twelve. Very good. So I'm science -y. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. I was just mucking around with motorbikes when I was a kid. That's why I became an engineer. I wasn't science -y. It's only now I'm retired that I've got time for this stuff. <coughs> anyway, that camera's taken a shot. It's very low. Wait, you were allowed to ride motorbikes when you were my age? I'll tell you what, that might get the mountain over there, the hill, and not actually get the um, 
You didn't ask, answer option. my question. Was it? You were allowed to ride motorbikes around my age. Well, I think this is an open leading question and your dad's going to kill me depending on the answer. <laughs> Hang on, there it is. Boom. No, you're not having one. See that? Not bad, huh? That's a lot of stars. I know. Hey, isn't that and incredible? And you could have planets in the Goldilocks zone. Yeah, and I'll show you. There's a galaxy nearby, which is called Centaurus A, which is, uh, what is that one called? Uh, 5128. We'll go to that one next. So 5128. You no, know, I totally forgot the name of the galaxy that's going to collide with ours. Andromeda is, oh, is the one. one. In four billion years, apparently. <laughs> so I think we'll be dead by then, but... Anyway. Well, one or two billion years, the Earth is probably going to be a desert, but we may have moved on from Earth. We might have moved on, exactly right. Hang on a second, I'm just going to change the file name again. So I've got uh, this one, which was 5128, and then I'll snap it off. Now, this one might need a few... Um, once the Earth is in the death zones and we already know of a suitable planet for humans, yeah, we're going there. <laughs> we're going there. <laughs> I think we'd do a runner, you reckon, eh? So this one being a galaxy, it's pretty bright. Um, we'll probably get it, but we might need to do what's called stacking and stack a couple up. So just wait and see what happens. I mean, who knows? Maybe I might be, uh, when I grow up, might be part of the team that goes to the new planet. I might. Yeah, well, there's people already planning to go to Mars. I mean, that's um, I'd love to do that. Here we go, it's taken the shot, now it's processing, and you should see what this galaxy looks like. And you're I would like to see how long it would take to terraform Mars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then again, it might have some interesting organisms there that we don't really want to terraform. There it is. Oh, look, we must have had a satellite or, or something fly past. See the line? See the straight line? Yeah. And that's the galaxy. Now, you're talking about planets and stuff. See the black thing? I'll, I'll um, just drop it down the colour. Black thing, you say? Yeah, you see the black, see that big ball of stars? It's got a big black dust lane running through it. Can you see it? Does that mean it's moving? No, it means that there's a big dust lane running through it. <laughs> you, can you see it? If you get straight onto it, you can see that big... Now, if I stack this a few times, I'm not going to because it's just more fun zooming around, but it, there's actually a very dark black section at the top there in that direction and a big black black dark section like if I move them Since now. you're probably a uh, professional astrophotographer, have you ever heard of neutron stars? I have, but I don't take pictures of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one would. So, no, nah. but um, yeah, it's... <laughs> They're justly named because it's... I wonder what that was that Neutron stars are about a couple miles long, mm -hmm. but they have enough neutrons in them to create a gravitational force strong enough to rip suns apart. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And planets. Yep, and there's also um, beams of rays and stuff that come out, and they're like huge... Play Mars and pulsars. La ...laser beams that kill us and stuff, but we, we, we won't go there. I'm just going to look for... I mean, if um, you were to set foot on a neutron star, instantly you would be smushed. If I go over here to Elberio, which is a very nice double star uh, centre, and I'll just have to... Binary star system. It is. I'll show you. So I've just got to go to it. Elberio, which is in the stars, name stars. It's up in the north, so the scope's going to have to slow, s slew all the way around. So it's going to take a while. But anyway, I'll just um, name the shot, same as before. Yeah, just careful, don't touch that scope because it'll lose its um, alignment. If you trip over any wires and stuff, Elberio. Is that how you spell it? I forget. I think so. It'll do. Anywho, wait until it goes beep. Okay, now I'm going to do something tricky here. I'm actually going to go see this thing called Live View. Here it is. You can see it's a double star right there. See, you can see both stars. Look, if I zoom in, here it is. You can see the one red. That's that's the live view of the camera. That's not actually, that's like a video feed off the camera. You know, like we saw Saturn before? Mm -hmm. Right, so that's a red star. It's bigger, but it's not as hot as this one, which has a blue tint to it, okay? The blue one's hotter, okay? And it's also, you know, might be behind. 
it, I forget what the orbit time of these two stars are, but um, yeah, so that's a live view shot of it, which is quite interesting that you can split these. Um, when they orbit, if you uh, if there were to be trails around them, then it would look like they were playing Frogger. Or something like that. Yeah, it could be. I'll take a shot anyway and we'll see what it comes out like in the shot. And go back into the viewer. That'll clean it up. The shot will be a lot. Like they're jumping over each other. Yeah, I'm interested to in what that satellite was. Or maybe it, it looks more like a satellite because it's dim at either side. If it was a meteor, it'd be dim and it gets really brighter as it burns up. Um, it could be a cosmic ray or something zapped through, but I doubt it. I've also got a few hot pixels coming now. You can see the little blue dots there because it's only an uncooled camera and it's taking 30 second shots, but that'll come up. There we go. There's some interesting stuff around up here too in the uh, in, in the uh, north. I'd like to get that North American nebula. I might give that a go next. Anyway, it's processing it. You'll see Elberio pop up in the middle. There it is. Bonk. And you can see by the diffraction spikes the colours of the stars as well. I'll zoom in on that for you. So I'm pretty sure if when it takes the picture, if some if an arm is in the way, it's going to get in the picture, isn't it? An arm of what? Or like my arm. Oh for yeah, instance. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can see there's two stars there. It's just I took them for too long. I probably need to drop them down for exposure time. But I just want to go um, this, like I say, this North American Nebula here, which is uh, NGC 7000. So let me just go to that. NGC 7000. Mm-hmm, apparently. <laughs> NGC. It's going to be a lot of zeros. 7000. It'll be nearby. The scope won't slow you very much. And again, I'll just get out of here. Go okay, NGC 7000 in the name, just so it names the shots. Ooh, bugger. Okay. <laughs> Was that you tap it or what? Huh? <laughs> I accidentally tapped it. Yeah, well, please don't, because it'll lose its al it'll lose its alignment, and then I'm stuffed. I'll have to do it all again. So let's just do this now. See where it goes to. Oh my gosh, that is it. It's flipping. Yeah, it's doing a meridian. What they call the meridian flip. So we'll just wait and see what happens. Um. It has gone to the right. It's taken a while to get there, isn't it? It's looking straight up. <laughs> yeah, it's flipping the deck, what they call the deck axis. You've got a deck axis on your little scope, and it's flipping all the way down to face north. Eventually. Still going. Can hear it winding it. Here it comes. Yeah, pl please don't tap it or anything, and don't stick your hand there because this is going to be a shot I'd like to keep. Here it comes. Here it comes. I understand. So let's have a look here. Thirty second shot. See what happens. Some nice stars around these. It's one, these, are, these are called asterisms when you see lines of stars, and there's one nearby to that Alberio which we should have gone looking for called the Coat Hanger. But uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. So, yeah, I haven't, uh, haven't shot this for a while. Hmm, no, it's. What did you touch? Nothing. Okay. Awesome. You might have to take it again. Let's have a look here. 